people to be incredibly evasive. But what I found interesting is Japanese are almost identical to British. You can never get wow. a straight no. Japanese won't say no, and they go out their way to not offend. Upper class British are exactly the same. So if you were in a, I don't know, a lingerie store and you wanted to buy a hammer and you didn't know it was a lingerie <laughs> store, that's a Japanese person. Can I buy a hammer here? They would say yes. Okay, where's a hammer? Oh, you go out the store, you turn right, and you go down the street, and there's a hardware store. So they don't oh. want to say no because that would be direct. Too direct. Yeah. yeah, and in a way, a lot of British culture is like this. But then again, if you go up north, if you go to Newcastle, if you go to any of the northern English pro- uh, places, they're much more direct. Wow. In- <laughs> Southerners, English people from the south, and it's all class related in Britain, would find very rude. So you just have to be aware. Australians are the exact opposite. Australians just say what they feel. Which oh. really offends British. Oh, yeah. Like Americans. West, uh, even Americans told me in Australia, you think we're direct. Australians, they're really direct. Seriously, that is how direct Australians are. And so mm-hmm. British look down mm-hmm. on Australians. And but, but, Mr. Eric, all diplomacy aside, you talking to your best friend right now, and your best friend asks you, you have a choice between a female executive and a male executive, which one, based on your experience, would you prefer to work with and communicate with? I, and I'm not just saying this to sound politically correct, I absolutely resolutely refuse to consider somebody on gender or apparent race or whatever else, just on their merits for the specific position. It really comes down to that. Now, it, sometimes those merits, the gender might be the merit because you've got to appeal to a certain demographic or whatever else but ultimately it's got to be the person who can do the job first there was a great interview by somebody from the manhattan institute i believe it was or no it might be in the hudson institute now somebody's supposedly right wing i don't like that term but people understand what i mean by that think tanks might sound a bit strange to start with but they made the good point that um, affirmative action actually harms africans did africans get affirmative action in sporting challenges or did they get there because they just did the sport I see. better? I, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, just you, because you they're female is not a good enough reason or male or vice versa. Yeah, okay. That's it. So the whole point is, imagine if you would take weak candidates and put them forward. We, Serena Williams didn't get to be the champion that she is because she got any buys. She got there because she went up against the very best that there were, and she did the very best she could. And that's all we've got to do with all um, all Africans, I think. We've got to say, we're not looking for handouts. We're not looking for buys. Just here I am. This is what I do. I can be very good at what I'm doing, and you make the decision if you want to deal with me on that basis. That's Nothing fair to enough. Do with yeah. Anything else. Yeah, that's fair enough. But, uh, gosh, I learned so much. So Australians are more direct, even more direct than Americans. <laughs> the British, yeah. that's quite beautiful. That actually means that's ugly. Or maybe they just, <laughs> okay. I have quite a few Britain people that I work with at work. I'm going to keep an eye. My, the head of my <laughs> school, the head of my school is from Brit- <laughs> is from England, yes. <laughs> And then we have a, the teacher next door to me, to my classroom, is from England. I've been avoiding speaking to him because I didn't understand what he meant half of the time. Yeah, but now I'm going to be doing what Dr. Christie and Miss Nancy said. I'm going to try to observe them and, and try to, um, yeah, try to also listen carefully and maybe even ask questions. Because mm. the British guy and I really clashed last year. I think it was a misunderstanding on my part on where he was coming yeah. from, from That's his culture. Exactly yeah. Me. Okay, let's see. Let's go in the audience, get a couple of people to shoot some questions. Then we'll, and Dr. Christie, while the people are shooting the questions, why don't you get your PPT up, please? Yeah. I only- okay.
Please raise your hand. Uh, sorry, sounds like a classroom. <laughs> or just begin speaking with your question. Hello, Miss, Miss Emily, my friend Mercury, she's here. She wants to add something. She wants to say something. My, all right. Uh, yeah, because she better she's, show, she's she from, better she's show from Ethiopia, but uh, she, it's okay. yeah, she's having some kind of, she doesn't like making friends with uh, Africans, so. I want her oh, to... really? Sudan. Ethiopia? Wait a minute, wait a minute. What country are you from? Ethiopia. <laughs> okay, show me your face, please. Hi. My friend, my friend. How are you? May I ask you a question, my friend? Yeah. Where is the country of Ethiopia located? What continent? It's in Africa. I didn't say that. She said it. Ah, <laughs> okay. We love you. Like with her. Okay, we love you. We love you. We love you. So, uh, say your first name for me, please. I'm Murky. Murky. Murky, can you tell us how you communicate very well with people from different cultures, either at your school, at your job, or just in general? Okay. So. Me, I, since I live in China as well, so I had the chance to meet like so many people from different countries, but I had like up and downs, called, like trying to like have a conversation or <laughs> to communicate with each other because like, I don't think like for us, I feel like we are supposed to be like the new generation. We're not like our father's generation or our grandparents' generation. So the way we communicate could be like easier comparing to the rest or to the way we grew up, right? So when I came here, I, I had like a really tough time to actually communicate with so many Af Africans as in the Western, the Southern, even the Eastern, like it's just so tough because and like- may, uh, may I correct you there? other Africans other than my own Ethiopians. No, <laughs> even my own, even my own Eastern. I am Eastern. So I said Eastern as well. Okay. So the, the <laughs> it's not personal. I'm gonna like talk about everybody. But the thing is sometimes when you become like especially for us, I, I think most of us live in like foreign countries, right? So when you live somewhere you're supposed to adapt the culture of where you're living in and you're supposed to adapt like more international than being local because when you would come from different countries you would come with your culture that is true but then you'll have a different kind of perspective right you don't really have to be local to come to have a conversation with international people because I wouldn't know how to communicate with uh I'm gonna take an example person, like example Nigerian, because I have Nigerian friends, right? When I speak to Nigerian, my friends, yeah, my Nigerian very friends, it's very difficult because actually they would they would say, "Oh, that is rude." It's not, I'm like, "No, it's not." Though I'm just trying to express how I feel, but you need to understand, I am not Nigerian. I do not know your culture, and then this is not about culture. It's about how it's like it's about conversation, trying to understand each other. So when another person like for example like if i'm talking to like kenyan or ugandan or nigerian whichever right mm -hmm. if I'm talking to them, like you should just listen to what i'm trying to say don't try to detect me because you're not going to understand how i speak because i'm not from where you are or i didn't grow up like you we're all international so we need to understand each others and then try to like take the main point or don't try to be provocative by every sentence I say. I am not trying to do that. I'm trying to make a point. So just take the point. So for me, it was really difficult because I, I love to talk very openly. I'm very straightforward. Whatever pops in my head, I am going to tell you however it is. Because most people, they would want you to like, you know, sugarcoat it, like try to make it better. So they don't, I'm like, no, this is this. If the truth I'm telling you, leave it or take it. Like, I mean, take it or leave it, right? So if I'm telling you, or you don't have to be offended, you could ask a question and I could explain, right? But for a person to say, oh, you can't say that. I'm like, for example, I'm going to take an example of me and Christy. 
since she's my friend, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's hear about yeah. that. Back in the day, she would direct, met, I would say, when she said something yeah. shockingly, something crazy, I would say, are you mad, right? And then she would say, <laughs> hey, what do you mean by that? I'm like, I'm just saying, like, it's an expression. I'm not saying you're mad, mad, like crazy, crazy. Obviously, she is not. That's why I'm talking to her. That's why she's my friend. But <laughs> it's like an expression where you, wherever you go, everybody has, like, a different kind of, I was, I was, I wasn't okay with that. You telling me I'm mad just for a joke. I wasn't okay with that because that's not how I grew up. When you tell someone, "Are you mad in Nigeria?" That means you're cursing that person in Nigeria. Oh. So when you say you're mad, so when she says you're mad, I'd be like, "No, you don't tell me I'm mad." <laughs> but she was joking. So actually joking, you know, she wasn't taking it serious. But I took it serious and I corrected her. Please, I know this is your culture. But it's not my culture. It's not your it's culture. It's not my culture. It's just the English. The yeah, way you yeah, it. the way you ex I, I say. So I told her, please, <laughs> with me or with any other um, Nigerians, do not say you're mad because oh. they might not understand. So do not just curse them. So when you tell someone you're mad, it means you're cursing that person, oh. and we do not. Mad has been crazy. As exactly. Because, it's like, not only because, that. It's yeah. not only nature. For example, like if I'm in like serious dialogue with someone, and then someone is trying to interrupt me, I'm just like, can you like shut up, right? And then people will say, why are you cutting me? Yeah. I'm not specifically talking about Nigeria. I'm talking about other countries in Africa. I'm like, like relax. Yeah. I'm not cursing. Yeah. They were like, can you say it politely? I'm like, why do I have to like do something to satisfy your ego? I'm just saying. If that's me. Like, I'm offending you. I'm not offending you. It's just the way I talk. Deal with it. If you want to have that kind of conversation, then go with your people. Like, do you know what I mean? But if you're trying to be, like, my point of view is, if you are trying to be international, you need to have a very open-minded because not everyone is going to understand your mm -hmm. culture, mm -hmm. right? I don't know. So where did you So where did you grow up? Where did you grow I up? I grew up all over. I traveled more of my life. So I have like a very open-minded, but I'm from Ethiopia originally. But like, I, I, I ah, went all okay, over. Okay. So like, even when I am with okay. Ethiopians, I am Ethiopian, but I don't have Ethiopian friends. You see? Because you are too American. I am not Americanized. <laughs> That's not fair. I'm just more open-minded. Like, it's just being open. Like, I understand. I understand. understand. I'm just joking. Hey, listen. Listen, I grew up in America, okay? So I was born in Congo. I moved there at 16. So when I speak to Congolese people, I'm referred to, oh, there goes that American. There goes that white person. <laughs> Some of them will call me because I say what I mean and I what mean what I exactly. say. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But then, then my fellow Congolese are like, Okay, they beat around the bush. Not all of them. I'm not trying to generalize, yeah. okay? They will beat around the bush. It's like, um, are you going to come to my house tomorrow at 12 o'clock? Yeah, I'll be there. 12 o'clock comes, you don't see the person. What's going on? Mm -hmm. yeah. You said you will be here. Yeah. But, but, yet, <laughs> but yet they expect, they expect that. They expect perfect, not perfection, but they expect me when I say I'll be there at 12 noon, all of them will be ready. Well, Amelia, she yeah. she meant what she said. So why should I be meaning what I'm saying? And then you're not meaning, you know, so, meaning like, what you're saying. You yeah. So I try to say. get you. So for me, as yeah. an Ethiopian, as an African, right, as an African, yeah. I really have a hard time being friends with African, but I do have friends, which... They're very selective <laughs> and they're very open minded. They have seen things or or learned, I guess <laughs> that is <laughs> to understand it, right? But and then yeah, not every African country that I am willing to discuss it, but so it does it's it's really difficult. <laughs> I'm just gonna be okay. honest. So it's really difficult. So if I'm gonna I I, I, I have a favor answer, to ask you. Uh -huh. I have a favor to ask you, Murky. Yeah. From now on, stop looking at the origin. Kind of like Eric. Eric, can you hear me, Eric? Yep. You mentioned something about it. it doesn't matter, male or female. It's the credentials and what got them there. 
Yep. So, Merky, right. moving forward, forget that the person is from Kenya, Nigeria, America, or even I whenever. I am so. I am so. Like, and then, like, yeah. most of the time, like, right now, yeah. example, I do have few Nigerian friends, right? And then when I'm going, yeah. I don't really have many African friends, as she said. That's why they think I don't like Africa. It's just not that. It's okay. just a lack of communication, right? So, yeah. I do have Nigerian friends and I love it. They have this energy that I am really attracted to. Like it's the energy that attracts you to someone, right? And I, I yeah. speak out of it. And then I feel like, yeah, this is nice. This is great. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I totally so, get it. And yeah. I'm really happy to hear that. I can see you like with Dr. Christie, you are understanding each other. Yeah. And uh, yeah. by the way, by the way, where I came from, my original country of Congo, um, they say that Dr. Chrissy don't hate me for this. Miss uh, Miss Nancy don't hate me for this. But they say that you, my fellow uh, uh, Nigerians, are very aggressive. We can be. <laughs> they can be. Okay, I'll tell you we that can much. be. Actually, we can be aggressive. That if we're not getting like if we're not getting things done the way they ought to be done. So we can yeah. be a little aggressive. And Especially if the you, culture, something I have learned as an outsider, yeah. the culture, when they speak, they're loud. It's just how it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's how it is. Ghanaian, yeah. Nigerian. And I was like, Jesus, can you like tone it down, you know? But that's how yeah. they are. So when you live with them, with the like with the people, you kind yeah. of like, oh, okay, it's just who they are. So you okay. just it. Yeah. Now let's get a comment from Mapule. I, I know right. Mapule, you wrote in the chat earlier when I believe it was Dr. Christie that mentioned something about South African. Mapule, you were kind of not okay with it. Can you talk to us, Mapule? Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, so I'm Mapule and I'm from South Africa. Um, and I'm a teacher in China, so I do work with um, different people from different countries, from the UK, um, from America, my fellow South Africans, Ghanaians, Nigerians, you know, and um, I would just, I would like to clarify um, on behalf of my fellow South Africans um, to Dr. Christie. Um, in our culture, um, we grew, there's a say that we have, we say Ubuntu, you know, the spirit of togetherness. We promote that a lot in my country. So when we address each other, we would like everyone to address us on the same level. It doesn't matter whether you're a doctor, you're a pastor, you're whosoever. We want you to address us at the same level because we are one. That's the kind of um, spirit we promote in my country. So um, we find it very uh, difficult when someone um, requires of us to address them by their title. So, I mean, title for us is something that we, you know, we, we acquire as we grow up, you, you, you get a degree, you become whatsoever, uh, whatever the profession that you choose, right? Um, but normally as a country, we promote Ubuntu. So we want people to actually address us as like my name, you know, Mapule, whether you are a grandmother or um, a grandfather or whatsoever, right? You just address us um, like as a normal human being. But then the dynamics only ch um, changes when you are at home, because then we call like our grandmother, Maholo, depending on the languages as well. Because South Africa, we have 11 official languages. So it's very diverse right and so this is why we pre, um we have the say of ubuntu we treat everyone the same because we we have coloreds that stay in our country indians chinese you know we're a very diverse country so um just to clarify that it's not really um that okay sometimes actually uh, my fellow countrymen can be difficult i do agree with that um but just to uh, make this comment about the title um, we usually ask ourselves, are you really a doctor? You know? <laughs> um, <laughs> no is, way, no way. That is the truth. That is the truth because we, we, uh, we are taught that you have to um, 
you know, you go to university, you achieve whatsoever title. <laughs> so whenever somebody tells us they are a doctor, we are curious. Um, are they really a doctor? You know what I mean? We are not sure. So firstly, we'll address you like a fellow human being. And then when we know more about you, if you are really a doctor, then we can address, okay, rightfully so. That's how it works. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Dr. Christy, Mapule has clarified her and defended her country. Uh, I never had a problem with you guys. I said it from the beginning. I never had a problem with any other person except yeah. Nigerians because we need to, like I said, I said, because we are in China doesn't mean we should forget our culture back home. You understand? Okay. So I have a problem with Nigerians in China not the Africans. I understand that is their culture, but when it comes to my people, we should understand and never, never lose our culture because even the Chinese, if they're in America, they still, you know, respect their culture. Anywhere they go, they do respect their culture. So why should we lose ours because we're in China? You know, okay. so that's what I mean. Mapule, I was never uh, against um, South Africans, okay? Okay. <laughs> so everything is okay now, Mapule. I, I no. saw your comment. I saw your comment. No, uh, I wasn't against uh, it because I was just um trying to figure out what she meant. So it's okay. okay I'm actually okay. I, I get well with Nigerians. I mean, um I yeah. have a good relationship with Christy herself, so it's okay. Okay. Uh, we have a question um from the audience, and then uh, Dr. Christy will go ahead and present uh, her PowerPoint. Uh Bridge Afrique, go ahead. Bridge of Freak. Go ahead with your question, please. Constellation. You are muted. Yeah. Oh, oh uh, thank you. I have a mm -hmm. question for Dr. Chris Tyler. Hey. Because I, I heard her carefully. Uh, she I think she spoke about preserving of culture. So my question is, is that the reason why Dr. Chris Tyler can't speak Chinese? Is it because she's trying to, you know, preserve her culture? Who said I can't speak Chinese? Me, okay. sir? <laughs> I can't I can speak survivor Chinese. If you can't speak Chinese, how can how can you survive in China? Okay, so my question is, why can't you speak Chinese fluent since you stayed a long time? Is it, is it because you're trying to preserve your culture? Or? Well, oh, that's not a fair question. That's not a fair At question. All. <laughs> because, hey, look, look, okay. look, look, Constellation. Okay. I speak seven languages. Okay. Je parle français. C'est ma langue naturelle, ma, na okay, ma langue okay. de ma mère. And I speak other Congolese languages. Guess what? Okay. I don't speak Chinese. Okay, my question is, why can't you speak Chinese? Is it because of the culture or something or just the personal? Just, just, can you just explain to us, like, why can't you speak Chinese? This is for a long time. Because I don't need Chinese. I don't need to Dr. Christie, yeah. you need to turn that around to him and ask him why doesn't he speak Chinese? Okay, Constellation, why can't you speak Chinese? Okay, thank you very much. I, I think that's the answer. <laughs> I mean, I the answer now. <laughs> you want to attack the guest speaker. <laughs> All right. I can't, I, I, the, the reason why my Chinese is not fluent is because I do not have Chinese friends to express my Chinese language with. So okay. for, okay. I think for people that, for Africans that can speak of, let me say for other countries that can speak Chinese lang language friendly, those people must or maybe have a, like a regular, let me say Perfect. constant communication with Chinese person. For okay. me, for instance, when I was in school studying Chinese, I even did Chinese language for three years for God's sake. And still, okay. I still cannot because after learning everything, I learned to pass Chinese exams, you know? But at yeah. the end of the day, I, I forget everything because I do not have someone to communicate with in Chinese. So I, along the line, I passed HSK three and four, but along the line, I forget everything because I, 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 I do not have anyone. So the truth is, if you have someone you can exchange Chinese with, like people that actually date and marry Chinese, you see that they can speak Chinese very friendly without stress because they actually have someone they can exchange um um the language yes yes that's a good yeah okay. all right so, thank you okay, so sorry. much so to be in conclusion yeah. it has nothing to do with preserving your culture that's why you can't speak i just said it here. 
doesn't have anything to do with okay, torture. Okay, 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 okay. I get it. I thought no, you said that. Yeah, I <laughs> Constellation, Dr. Christie just proved to us she has a friend from Ethiopia. Dr. Okay, Christie. Okay. Uh, Dr. Christy has her clients here, Mapule from South Africa. She oh, also you. has uh, Rose, Rose who grew up in, uh, uh, Rose, okay. I forgot, where did you grow up at? Uh, thank you very uh, I grew much. up in Nigeria until I was 13 and then moved to South Africa with my family. Oh, okay. Yeah, so she, so this is, this is not a personal attack, by the way, Dr. Christie. Okay. This is just the way Constellation asks questions I to know. all of us, to <laughs> all know. of our guests. <laughs> Miss Nancy, know. are you still there or are you <laughs> taking a nap on us? <laughs> Miss Nancy? Okay, we may have lost her. All right, Dr. Christie, if you have your PowerPoint, you can go ahead. I noticed Rhea, you came in. And Mr. Eric also, thank you so much for that link. Mr. Eric, do you mind putting your email for us? Sure thing. Okay, thank you for that link that you just shared with us. I'm, I'm definitely going to read that. Okay, Rhea, are you there? Time. You guys okay. Um, Dr. Christy, are you able to are you able to share your PPT? Yes, ma'am, I think so. Okay, go ahead. Teach us. I want to learn more. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna be fast with it because um I think we do not have much time. It's just very short, just six slides, because I don't want to take much time much of our time so no problem um i would like us to take at least five minutes to think of five countries and their culture without deep thinking and then um, just try to um, um observe what you think um can be um a barrier between your own background where you, where you from and the other um, person's culture, just like even with our own country, have problem communicating with um, different country backgrounds. So there are many different ways to define cross-cultural um, uh, communication. We can um, define it with um, et ethnic background which country you're from, I'm from Nigeria, she's from Ethiopia, I'm from America, you're from UK, we can define with country, right? We can also define by, um, um, uh, let me say, gender, male, female, we can also um, define with organization, where you work, where I work, because um, from what I know is um, different organizations have their own culture. So when defining a cross-cultural communication, we need to check all areas where um, um, different et ethics, um, different um, countries, religion, culture, everything, everything, even the organization where you're working, okay? So um, cultural, to define cultural in general, common set of values and belief that a group of people share, that's cultural, that's cultural. So for as a religion, they have the culture. Uh, uh, as a brand, you have your culture. So every individual has its own culture. A set of individual have their own culture that they cultivate, okay? So when you, we start to talk about communicating cross-culturally, we have to understand the frame of reference that the individual are actually going to receive in the message, okay? So for instance, when you bump up into, maybe you bump into someone from Italian background who has a tendency to talk with their hands, uh, uh, giving you big smile, organ, like big hug, okay? They have this dramatic way of greeting. And then uh, you, you compare to um, other uh, Asia background like the, Asia country like the, um, uh, uh, China, for instance, the Thailand people, 
you know, they greet this way, they have their own special way of greeting. So just imagine an Italian person meeting with uh, a, an Asian person and then they just, the, you see the, the, the communication or let me say the, the greeting will be kind of awkward if an Italian person just goes straight and all the Asian person, especially a, a, an Italian man going to all uh, uh, an Asian lady like Chinese who have different in any one of the following style of working, age, nationality, ethnicity, race, gender, sexual orientation, etc. So cross-cultural communication can also refer to the attempts, please guys, listen to this, attempts that are made to exchange, negotiate, and mediate cultural differences by means of language, gest gestures, body language, very important, the body language. So it is how people belonging to different cultures communicate with one another. This is the basic um, definition of cross-cultural communication. So it is important to note before diving into the details of cross-cultural communication that are cultural generalization that do not account for specific individuals in a culture. For example, in Ireland, Ireland, there is a culture of teasing those close to you. But you can't assume that every Irish individual enjoys or partake in teasing generalization. You understand, I hope we understand this point. Okay, so because a Nigerian person like me can sometimes be aggressive, doesn't mean that every Nigerian, it cannot just assume and then judge every other Nigerian, every individual in Nigeria that way. Because I, for instance, I'm a, per, I'm a Nigerian and I enjoy being respected. I enjoy my culture. I like to be addressed certain ways. Doesn't mean that all Nigerians have the same um, um, attitude or let me say the same uh, behavior, okay? So you need to first, regardless if the person is Nigerian and you assume that all Nigerian men or, the, or women act this way, doesn't mean that you should judge them by the way other people or the people you have met in the past have behaved, okay? So this still brings us back to observation and listening. Now, steps in effective communication. Number one, reflect on your own culture, your own personality, define yourself. That's number one thing in all communication. You need to first reflect on your own culture. You as a person, what do you like? What don't you like? You as a person, what is your culture? Like for me, for instance, I can get, God knows, I can get aggressive within a short period of time. And then I can just be very calm. I'm not bipolar, but this is just who I am, okay? So, and then I, 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 I'm not just aggressive to everyone, but then I'm aggressive. If you're not getting my point, and I've actually, I have to repeat over and over for you to get me. So I might be aggressive in that kind of communication, okay? So, Research other cultures, they are dressing. So when I, as a Nigerian, I know that I have to dress some certain way. And if I dress and put on a bikini, for instance, and then walking around the beach with a bikini, um, maybe it's not my, my parents, because there was, okay, this time, I, I, uh, 2018, I was in Malaysia, right? And I was at the beach, I was on bikini. And then I posted a picture and my parents were like, take it down now. So, <laughs> so it's kind of a big, it's a big deal for our, uh, our culture in Nigeria on how we dress. But because Nigerians, don't, we don't want to show our body, doesn't mean other culture are like that. So we need to research and then also research on the greetings. Like I said earlier, the way the Ethiopians, I'm sorry, the way the Italians greet compared to where the Asians would um, greet. So we should understand that, we should understand language, especially the body language, okay? So body language is kind of very, very important because sometimes when um, I'm having communication with someone and then my face is um, some way, they tend to be like, oh, she's mad, she's hungry, or she's, uh, she's, she's frustrated, something. But then at that time, maybe something else is actually um pissing me off at that time or i'm just lost in my own thoughts so people try people will misunderstand body language so easily so you need to first understand the body language that you are trying to um 
um, get or pass to one another. So eye contact. So for Nigerians, I won't say for Nigerians in general, I would just say um, basically the Africans or the West Africans, um, eye contact means a lot. Sometimes it, in Nigeria, especially in the Yoruba land, when your mom looks at you, she doesn't need to say anything. You understood what she's saying just by eye contact. So if you're talking with someone from a different background that they do not even know what eye contact is at all, it's going to be a problem. Okay. So if you're talking with someone and then you're giving them eye, like shaking your eyes, they don't even understand what eye contact means. And then when you stare at people too much, some people do not like this. Some other cultural backgrounds, they do not like when people stare at them. It's a problem. So you need to understand this. Attitude, gender roles, personal space. This is something that we should also understand when it comes to dealing with people. And especially in our workplace, and wherever it is, people's personal space. You need to respect their, um, their space, yeah. So food and entertaining tradition. Okay, so um, this is something that you should also understand in order for you to be able to communicate and then leave or be friends with someone from a different cultural background. So I will use I am Mickey, for instance, there was a time she invited me to a party and I was in that party. I did not enjoy that party at all because it's a white guy's party. So everything they're just doing, dun, 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 they're all happy, jumping. I'm like, I don't, I'm, I'm not okay. I don't, what is this, this, this? I don't like it. Like, I'm not, I'm not flowing with the vibe here. I need my Nigerian music. I need my Nigerian. But then I should have enjoyed it. I should have been neutral. I should have been open to receive other cultures and then enjoy the, the party. So all this still lies on communicate, effective communication when it comes to dealing cross-cultural communication. Now, finally, ask questions, just like Miss Emilia had said earlier. So many um, misunderstandings could have been prevented. So many miscommunications could have been prevented if only we can just ask questions. Question is a very big deal. It's very essential in communication. If you do not understand something, just ask. Just ask questions. And then when you're asking the question, make sure you are very detailed. So the person you're asking can actually understand what you're asking and do not be polite. So like she said, when she, when she, um, if she's in a, in a group of, of people and then she's talking and then she just, tell, and someone is interrupting her, she could just say, can you just keep quiet? Can you just shut up and let me talk? Instead of saying that, you can just say, can you, you can just, you know, ask a question and directly ask the person question, why are you, why are you not letting me talk? Just keep quiet and let me talk. There's a way you can say it and then there won't be problem, okay? So there's a way you can ask a question politely that the person will not feel um, bad or feel uh, that will go against someone's religion or culture that they believe in, okay? Okay, let me put it this way. There's a way you ask questions that will not get, go against someone else's belief. Because that's the key, believe that belief. Okay. Now, sources of miscommunication, like number one, I said it before, assumption. We do this a lot. We just assume. We assume all the time. We assume she's supposed to say this. You cannot expect um, a reaction that you are thinking in your head. Like if I say something or do something and I expect you. I already have my premeditated uh, reaction from you. That will not work. You have to expect different reactions. Everyone from different backgrounds has a way of addressing issues, has a way of communicating. So do not expect um, your own premeditated um, um, answers in your head and expect someone, uh, the person you're talking to, to have that same um, answer that you had premeditated in your head. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. So as uh, this adoption of similarity, this refers to our tendency to think how we behave and act is the universal, universally accepted rule of behavior. This is very important. That the way I think, the way I act, that should be the way Mekki should have. That should be, be the way Mekki should think. That is, that is a very big, big, big 
big no when it comes to communication with uh, people from different backgrounds. So like uh, Miss Nafi also said that because a Nigerian would um, understand a body language doesn't mean all Nigerians would also understand what you're trying to say. So even though we are from same Nigerian, I'm a Yoruba person, you are an Igbo person. The way Igbo communicates is very, very different from the way a Yoruba person would communicate. So language difference. This refers to our tendency to think how we behave and act. Okay, I already said that, right? Okay. No. So non-verbally misinterpretation. This is very important. The way we dress, the way we express ourselves through our body language, eye contact, gesture, also communicate something. A simple gesture like nodding the head is considered to be yes in certain cultures and no in others. So when you're doing this, some people in their culture, maybe this, this nodding of your head, maybe it's a no, and then you're trying to communicate yes. So do not assume that your own yes, which is you nodding your head forward, means yes to other person. You need to first understand their own culture and what they mean. So I think when communicating cross-culturally, we should avoid non-verbal um, non communication because this is a big deal. So I think we should avoid this completely. Avoid the use of slangs when communicating uh, with um, cross-culturally, okay? Now, preconception and stereotypes. Stereotypes involve putting people into predefined slots based on how, based on our image of how we think that are or should be. So when you define for someone based on how you think, like I've said over and over and over again, this is very important. So you should not assume, you should not define someone based on their image or the image of your own thoughts, okay? So it may consist of a set of characteristics that we assume that all members of a group share. For instance, we assume, some people might assume that, okay, from um, all the people in, um, uh, let me put it, let me, I'm so sorry, but there's a church in Nigeria. So for we, I'm from the Winners Chapel. So every Winners, and then we have the um, Deeper Life Church. So do not assume that every Deeper Life people or uh, people from that particular church, because we all see them the same way that people from this deeper life church, they are very wicked people. That is how me, I see them. So, but so coming to, once you tell me you are from deeper life church, you go to you, attend deeper life church, I run away from you because I know they are very, I know, I think that they are very wicked. This is me defining them based on their church that they attend, you see? so. When defining people doesn't so doesn't mean that though most of them most of them are very wicked people, <laughs> so you should be careful. Not every one of them are wicked. So do not define people based on the characteristics that the member of that organization um, share. Okay. So, but stereotype, stereotypes may lead to wrongful expectation annotation. Okay. Now let's go on. Tendency to evaluate. Humans tend to make sense of the behavior and communication of others by analyzing them from one's own cultural point of view without taking into consideration why the other person is behaving or communicating a certain way. So this is very important. This is something that we will all be saying. This is something that Mrs. Nancy have already said also. So we, do, we, we need to first, we, we don't analyze people. Okay, we don't analyze people based on our own culture, just like me and Mafule had said earlier. I, I can't just say because I need to be respected and people should address me to a certain way. And then I have to impose that on other people from a different background. That is a big no, we don't do that. We can't do that, especially where we are not, we are very, very, very far from home, okay? So, lastly is the eye anxiety. Sometimes being confronted with a different cultural perspective will create an anxious state in an individual who does not know how to act or behave and what is considered to be appropriate. For example, a Japanese man and an American having a business meeting where both are unsure of the other cultural norms. So, 
like we all know that the Japanese man, they have their own culture, very, very diverse culture. And then those, you mix in the American man, which is just very, you know, carefree and then doing in the thing just let me just not go too far let me stay here in in china okay so i'm communicating with the chinese and then i expect chinese to compromise you see we always expect this especially when it comes to our visa issue and stuff we always want them to compromise we always want to say something and tell them yeah they are humans they should understand no they will not understand because they are programmed chinese people they respect they they do things just the way they are being told to do. There's no compromising. They won't pity you because you have anything. Okay, but when it comes to our own people, like the Americans, the Africans, they might want to adjust the situation and then find pity on you. You know, they might want to communicate with you with, with passion, with, uh, with empathy. But then the Ch Chinese person will not communicate with you with empathy. It is not because they are wicked. It is not because they are not sensitive. This is their culture. This is how they are being trained. So we need to understand this. And then if we can understand the way Chinese, we handle a situation is far different from the way an African or American person will understand the situation. I think cultural background or culture, we won't be talking about cultural communication at all if we can be open to all them. Now, to, to reduce the above barriers that I have discussed, to cultural uh, communication, one can take the effort to develop one's listening skills. Very important. Listening skills, observation, just have that. You don't have to say, you don't have to quickly jump in, jump into the communication. Just pause when you're in, in a gathering full of people from diverse um, backgrounds. Just first understand them, listen, check, check everyone, you know, before you throw your own bomb, before you jump into the communication observe and listen first. This will ensure that we are we start hearing the real meaning of what is being said instead of understanding at face value. So now, becoming aware of our perceptions towards others, we ensure that we take steps to not prejudge a person or stereotype them by accepting people and their different and acknowledging, listen, acknowledging that we don't know everything, we make us open to people and they're different, okay? And then this will result in using contextual information for better understanding. Lastly, seeking feedback and taking risks to open up channels of communication and being responsible for our feelings and actions, we go a long way in ensuring that miscommunication is mitigated. I hope you all understand what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not just of course, my yes. Yes, yes, of course we do. Okay, yeah. so um, I would like, this is, that's, that's, that's all, but I would like to give uh, an instance, like this is what exactly I wanted to say, share earlier. So I went, I, I had a, a, a brand ambassador for my brand, we've been together for a year, work together, we always communicating, I always see you on social media, you see me on social media, we are always talking, we are friends on social media. And then we got to meet in person. And then after the old meetup, we went back to our home, to our city. And then I sent you a message and I asked, because I really enjoyed your company and I want to keep that company, I want to have more relationship with you. I want to be able to communicate with you perfectly without, you know, um, judging or anything. And then I, I just sent you a message. I sent her a message and I asked her, hi, dear. Um, I would love to, can you tell me how you perceive me? Like we've been talking for over a year on phone. We've been interacting on phone and and I've seen you on social media, you've seen my action on social media. Can you tell me what's different that, um, what you perceive of me in reality? How do you see me in reality? Is it different from the Christy you know on social media or it's just the same? Or can you just tell me something about me? This is just me going on my own personal growth, you know? That was what I asked, just a simple question. And then it became a big problem that we had to block each other. You understand? So this is something that we need to first understand how people perceive us. 
So now I ask this question and then you went ahead and then discuss me with another group of friends that this girl is being insecure. She need obligations for to define herself. She need confirmation. She need to, so she need to feel good. She want people to tell her good things about herself so she can feel good. That wasn't my communication. So I, I had to go back and check. Did I ask the wrong question? What, what, what happened? How, how is this a problem? You see, I just asked a simple question. You can just easily tell me. And then I went back to her and I asked her, why is this other girl coming to tell me that I'm being secure for asking you a question? I asked you a question and I'm hearing from different girls, different other people saying different things about me. It is between you and her. You can simply tell me or you can just tell me, Christy, I don't know. And the response I got from her was a fight. She attacked me and started insulting me as well. So, so this is this is this is a big. I can't. I don't know if I should call this a cultural miscommunication or I just am the one that that because according to them they said I'm trying to I'm being insecure. So this is a question for everyone. Okay. I'm, I'm what saying, country? What country is she from? She's from South Africa. So I'm saying this because I need to hear people. I need. I'm, I'm throwing this as a question. I need to know if my communication was wrong, if I was, because they said I, I, I went so low to ask that question. You are my friend. If you're not my friend, I wouldn't have asked that question because I know me, I'm someone that can be um, very open. I talk a lot, I'm open, I can say anything. So I just wanted to know if I had said something to you during the uh, time that is kind of, or you've seen a different Christy compared to the ones you've met online. That was just my question. So why should that be a problem that will lead to us blocking each other? Because I have to block everyone. I have to block everybody actually, because I do not want to, at this stage of my life, I do not want to be associated with people that will think less of me or define or judge me just because I'm trying to communicate and you don't understand. So that's, that's all for today. Thank you so much. And this is my personal contact. This is my WhatsApp. This is my phone number. And I've shared my WeChat contact the last time. Thank you so much. And I'm, I'm really hoping to hear from you guys what, is, what you guys think I should have wow. done better when it comes to my communication with my friends. <laughs> um, I believe that your friend was being a bit childish. Um, yeah. Like even you, you guys know that I do daily nuggets and uh, many people know me uh, on social media that I have never met in person, never. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't see anything wrong with asking someone male or female for that matter. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm a lot more open minded because of, I, don't, I don't know, maybe in America, we just like straight like that. Mm -hmm. You just ask the person and nothing wrong with it. And if your friend, on the other hand, which you are not responsible for her actions, if she went on and, and, and behave in that manner, that's really sad to say. And to be childish enough to even share yeah, it with other friends. Exactly. That, and then the other friends really have to come to me and then yeah. attack me. Why are, you, why are you going around telling people, asking people questions about you? You just need obligations from people you are so insecure you can't even identify yourself you need people to judge you you need people to tell you who you are you you don't know who you are like i was like yeah well that is just that it, it's it's called stupidity yes. it's called stupidity but dr christy we had some a few okay. questions um uh, on the on the chat i'm not sure if you are able to if you can catch up with the chat maybe and uh, some of the questions, let me ask our other guests. Uh, maybe, Miss Nancy, are you still there or are you going to uh, Niger Island? <laughs> All right. Uh, Mr. Eric, there's a question in here um, on time. How is the time factor influence in uh, cross cultural? communication effectiveness um, in on the workplace. Is time really a factor? Meaning if I know my Chinese friend for 10 years, is that does that matter that I would communicate with them better maybe? Mr. Eric? Um, 
Oh. Can anybody hear me? Yes, I can hear you perfectly well. Yeah, and I, I, got, to, I got kicked can out. I, have to I got the question, Mom. Yeah, so I, I got kicked out. I yeah, said go to ahead. me, I said to mm. me, I think deeper life people are because this is my experience with them. They are wicked to me. So <laughs> this is my own uh, understanding with them. I'm not saying that all, like I said, not I have a small one. Like that, not everyone of the not all of them. You cannot judge one person. Maybe the small one count. Hello? We can hear you, Rose. Can you hear me? Oh Rose. sorry. <laughs> Okay, it's okay. So I, 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 wasn't, her. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. referring to the old deeper light people. Okay, I'm just saying that I'm using them as an example that because I've had a, an experience with one of them being wicked to me, I cannot judge that the old deeper light people are wicked because most people in Nigeria think this way that the deeper light people are wicked. Most people from where I came from, like from my own family, my own friends, everyone around me, they, they always classify deeper life as being a wicked people. People from that church are always very wicked. That is why I said that doesn't define the entire church. Do not use that to define the entire church. I'm actually if you, I'm actually fighting for deeper life people. I'm not going against these people, please. <laughs> okay, okay. So what is the deeper life religion about? They're just um, like the way um, Mr. Tunde, I think Tunde Akonde had said deeper life members are strict and principle because of their denominational doctrines, not that they are wicked. So he mm, had already okay. Yeah. That, okay. That very and, yeah. And Christy, uh, um, uh, Dr. Christy, I'm sorry. Uh, you you did address that person that is a hi dear. Maybe she got angry. No, I'm kidding. No, <laughs> actually did not. Actually, I'm older than her, so I can use dear for someone that I am older than. You, you, if you're if oh. older than you, you can't use this. <laughs> oh, okay, I got okay, okay. 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 I get it. Now, there's a question. Her. Did you see the question on time in the in the chat? Did you see Rose's question on time? Yes, I saw time. Okay, mm. so let me see. She said, is time an important factor and how can time cause confusion between people from different cultural backgrounds. Yeah. Time can be, so it's not time. Like how, what Mrs. Amelia already said, right? You said um, <coughs> when you invite someone to an, um, an event or to your house and they tell you they'll be there at eight o'clock and they are not there. This, is a, this can cause a big problem because you are time conscious, but the Africans, like my Nigerian, they'll tell you there's African time. <laughs> So <laughs> we have something called African time. So they'll tell you, they expect you that you to know that it's African time. If I, as an African, a Nigerian person, I want to host an event and the event, I make that event to, to begin at 8 p.m. I will tell my Nigerian people, the event is at 4 p.m. Because <laughs> I know, they will, even at 4 p.m., at that 8 p.m., they're still not there. So I understand this as my own culture, right? But then so if I'm hosting an event with Chinese and Africans, and I said 2 p.m., and then my Chinese friends are already there at 2 p.m., but in my head, I, I, I want the, the meeting to start at 6 p.m. because I know my African people will be there at 6 p.m. You see, this is a big, this is a big um, um, problem. Because the, Niger the Africans will be there. The, I mean, the Chinese will be there at 2 p.m. waiting for the Africans to come at 6 p.m. So if I want to um, utilize that kind of, pro um, to solve that kind of cultural um, problem, what I, would have, what I will do is I will tell my Chinese people the, party, the event is at 6 p.m. And then I'll tell my African people the event is at 2 p.m. Because I know for sure, 100%, they will be there at 6. They won't be there at <laughs> yeah. So um, time can be cultural. It can be a big confusion, even apart from cultural background, even in business. Because um, today I had a client. Uh, he texted me and he said, "I why is it that you read messages you don't reply? This is really pissing me off." 
So I, 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 then I think to me, I said, usually what I should have done is, oh, I'm so sorry, you know? But then I told him straight up, I said, I have a life outside my work. This is weekend. We are on weekend today, it's Saturday for God's sake. <laughs> it's Saturday. We are on weekend. Mm-hmm. You don't expect me to answer you straight away. I have a life outside my work. So it was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I understand that maybe from wherever, like Chinese people, they work from Monday to Sunday. They are always there. But for me, I have to put time. So if I'm not replying, it means that we are closed. Just wait to Monday. You understand? So as the business person rules, time is very, very important, both for cross cultural in your workplace, which individual, everything is very important. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Christy, was it Rose that asked the question on time? Yes, ma'am, it's Rose. Okay. Rose? Rose, are you yeah. here? Yes, I'm here. Um, is that what you meant by time is like uh, keeping time or did you also mean the other side of time in terms of the duration that you know the person? I, I actually meant what Dr. Christy said um, with okay. the fact of African time and Chinese time and you know, respecting each other's culture when it comes to time. In, in America, we call it CPT. You know what CPT stands for? No. Color exactly, people time. Exactly. Ca- Chinese color people time. Is a sign very early. <laughs> being late, being late is a sign of illness, distress, sex in both China <laughs> and Japan. Very correct, Mr. Eric. Very, very correct. Yes. 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 <laughs> wow. Very interesting. Let's go for some more questions from the audience. Audience, ask your questions now. Constellation, you always have questions, but don't attack our, our guests, okay? <laughs> Are you ready, Constellation, with your burning like, question? I, like I have a question. a question. I would like to ask a question as well. What, sure, bro, go ahead. Let me directly ask you this question because I know you're still trying to build your customer relationship, okay? So how do you, how do you address a person that is being aggressive to you even though the person is trying to give you their money you know patronize you so how do you address that situation you understand what i'm saying right now i'm being uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm is that right. one yeah. is, is that one directed to someone <laughs> yes okay let me put it uh, to everyone but for rose she's kind she's trying to you know to grow a customer relationship so that's why i'm asking okay how can you address someone that is being aggressive? How can you control, like, calm that person and still be able to uh, finish whatever business you have with that person? How can you control that person? Rose, are is you there? there? Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, that's a question for me. Um, I'm a very calm person um, well, most of the time, so it doesn't matter what energy someone brings to me. I can... First of all, I always apologize if I feel like, okay, for some people, sometimes just saying sorry um, does the job. And also, I think it's important to listen to them and, and really show them that you care. And I've learned recently that some customers really want to be listened to and you shouldn't make it seem too businessy, if I may say. Don't make it seem like I only care about your money. Um, I also learned from the workshop we had with Dr. Christie that it's important to try to make your customer feel like you really understand what they're trying to tell you. So if you come with a very angry energy and if I also welcome you with my own anger, I don't think that's going to solve anything. So definitely, I think to neutralize the anger and apologize, listen to them, and then see how you can help them and then make them feel like you can truly understand where they're coming from. And from there, you suggest a solution. Rose, thank you so much. Then for Mrs. Nancy, I, um, the last, last week she was saying that, um, um, okay, because I mentioned that when after a client um, buy from her, I actually do say, Thank you so much because it goes a long way. I feel like I can connect with my customer that way. And she said that she doesn't think it is necessary for us to tell a client, thank you so much, because 
she is also rendering a service. It is a win-win on both ends. She's rendering a service, so um, she doesn't think it's necessary for, for us to say thank you to a customer because we are both rendering service for each other. So I would like her to, can she please um, elaborate more on that because it's a big uh, let's deal. Let's see if she's still with us. Uh, let yeah, me see. It's a big deal for China, for my, in my, in my um, um, business. It's, that thank you is a big deal. Miss Nancy, can you hear us? Okay, pro probably not. Um, let me see, there's some questions here or maybe some comment on the chat, Dr. Christie. I think uh, Mr. Eric says something about a Chinese will not do business with you until you show up to a banquet like six to 10 times. Dr. Christie, have you come across that? Will you not do business with you? Chinese will not do big business with you until they have seen you turn up for six to <laughs> no. What what is that all about, Mr. Eric? Yeah, can you elaborate? Can you unmute yourself, please? Yeah, well, I went on a tour with the mayoral delegation to Liverpool. We went to six cities starting in Kunming and then going on to Chongqing, Tianjin, Beijing, Shanghai, Qingdao. And ultimately, before you can get any contracts, and this is what our cultural advisors told us, you have to you have to get to know people really well, and they would they do have to see you, and they won't do business with you until you've done around six to ten banquets. So we spend that two week tour literally having our schedules torn up and then giving new ones. <laughs> we had to we had to go and see people's because press were following us everywhere because it was Caucasians and one African. And so we would always get press attention. So people wanted to bring attention to their businesses. It asked us to go and pose outside, you know, whoever's crocodile farm or whatever else they were doing. And uh, you just can't turn up and think you're going to meet somebody once at an event and do business. They absolutely require you to show that you are, someone who they can trust and they i guess they want to see your manners and see that you understand how to do business so oh, wow. it, uh, it was a very different thing to britain we were told don't expect to shake hands with somebody you've just met and get a deal it's going to take many many meetings but oh, once wow. you're in you're in let's just say well, like, okay, like Mickey, i strangers. can answer that for you okay that is My definitely problem. true uh, so I yeah. did work. You mute it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did work. So hello, uh, Amelia. I'm I'm available now. I you had a question for me earlier, and I couldn't answer immediately. Yeah. Um. Do, do you so remember the question? That uh, no, I didn't. I didn't get the question completely. Okay, I think it I, was Dr. I asked the question. Yeah. Yes, I, I said the last time I was trying to explain um, why um, saying thank you to a client means a, a lot to them. And then you said that um, you don't think saying thank you, um, saying thank you shouldn't be that important because you're also rendering that person a service. So it is a, a win-win on both ends. Do you understand me? Can you understand me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. No, that was not what I was uh, really saying. What I was okay. saying is on a on a normal. Why mm -hmm. should it be important to say thank you if we are just doing business? But people care how much you care. So that's mm -hmm. why it is important. That's why saying thank you. That's why asking how is your day. If they have family, mm -hmm. ask for their children, even though it is business, because people want to know that you care for them you beyond for them. the mm -hmm. exchange that is happening. Well, that so that was what I was addressing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That means I got you wrong. Because okay, yes, okay. when I say thank you, honestly, that the next thing I see, people are already adding me up from that person already sharing my contact with a friend saying that this girl she's so, she's so, so nice so nice so caring you know yeah. when say, hi how are you how is you like so to me most times i call my clients and check on them i think these things are big deal when keeping our clients 
yeah. communication yes, is they are. They, yeah, it, it is. Yeah. You know, if even uh, research says that um, men make more money when they get married, and one of the reasons is because their wives bring in the relational aspect that a lot of them would be overlooking. Because many yeah. times, since they are analog, they are logical people, they do stuff from a logical point of view. Sometimes their 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 customer could invite them for their children's birthday party or for something, and they are like, it's not important. But when their wives come in, the wife starts telling them, please do that. Go here. Have you called this person? You've not you've not mm -hmm. heard from him in a while. You get mm -hmm. because people truly truly want to know that you care for you them care. beyond exactly. business. Exactly. Wow, mm -hmm. amazing. Wow. Okay, guys, we're going to have to end it officially right now. And then after... Before we end it, let's say, uh, um, Rose said she wants, she has an uh, um, it has an advice for Dr. Christy. Can you please give me that advice? Okay, before sure, you? sure, sure. I'll tell you what, we're going to officially end it. That doesn't mean we cannot okay. continue, but we're just going to say our uh, thank yous. And then we are going to continue unofficially. Unofficially means we can turn off our cameras, but we can just talk and we can eat a goosey soup while we talk. Yes, That's, we can eat a yeah. goosey. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Chrissy, you coming to cook a goosey for me, eh? Okay, ma'am. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, for you showing so up. Um, yeah. We're just going to say official thank you right now to everybody. And then, of course, we're going to go, we're going to stop recording and we're going to ask a question, feel at home, and nobody is watching you. It's not going to be on YouTube and so on. Wait, this is uh, Mr. Be Michael, on would you like to say thank you? This was not there for the yes. okay. Mr. Michael. Wait, 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 wait. Rita Freak. Okay, in the absence of Mr. Michael, Constellation, um, would you like to say thank you, please? Thank you very much for this uh, for this program. I, I, I really I really get a lot of experience and like words from Dr. Christie, uh, Miss uh, Eric and and Mrs. Rose, and of course Mrs. Uh, trying to get a name. Nancy. It's Nancy. It's Nancy. Publicity, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. And we really appreciate that, uh, that that this kind of program should keep coming every time so we can get more knowledge and experience and of course build our everyday life and cut our relations as well too. So I really appreciate the time on behalf of Bridge Freak Martin and Ubuntu DNA. Thank you very much for your time today. And uh, yeah. I would like to add that next Saturday. Yeah. It's Daily Nuggets first year anniversary. Yes. Yeah, so please. Yay. So please, everyone so, who is in Beijing to come for Daily Nuggets magazine. I'll be going myself. So please, uh, everyone should show up and it's just two, 250 quite per ticket in a, in a hotel. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I think it's interesting. Yeah. Okay. And th thank you so much. So, Constellation, if you can stop recording now so we can just uh, relax, turn off our camera. But Rose had something to say. Uh, in oh, the no, minute. that wasn't yeah. me. That was uh, Mapule, I think. The recording has stopped. Mapule, okay. Mr. Eric, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, everyone. This has been very eye opening, and it's really good to see all of you in China. And, uh, yeah, I hope to watch the whole thing again on YouTube once you've uploaded it. So thank you for the opportunity. Thanks. Thank you. We're, com we're coming to the UK and uh, we hope to have a home there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, then. Uh oh. Uh oh, look at that British smile. That British smile, man. You are not welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. Uh, sorry. See you very Good. soon. To add to what I, I don't know, is this Dr. Christiana who says, says something like uh, I, I, would, I would like to respond to something about customer care and services. Like, um, I have sometimes in my, in my free time, I, I, I've done a research on my own self. I've used my phone to call some offices here in, in, 
Here experiment. I've got offices here in China. I've called in Nigeria to represent Africa, and I've called in the US. This is my response. When I take my phone, call the offices here in China, I, I mean the institutions, for example, the first thing they say on the phone is way like, like talk, you know, in a way, it's rude, like, like talk fast. Sometimes they even end my call, like talking to them politely. So I think the customer service here is uh, in a scale of zero to 100. I, uh, my view, I give them about 10 percent in China. Customer service is 10 percent, my view. Then why back home in uh, in Nigeria, because I'm from Nigeria, when I call them on the phone, they never pick the call. <laughs> <laughs> they never pick a call at all because they want you to come to their office and set your stuff there. So I think you got to me back home. I don't know what to say. I can't give them a, a ranting because they don't pick up. But something very remarkable when I call the customer service in the US, I call Western Union, I call Amazon, I call Apple. Man, their customer service is up to up to 95% because. They try to understand what you're saying, and even if you get angry to insult them or give some languages or a call, they never respond back to you. So, in my view, I think, uh, as, 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 as a business owner, I think, based on what I think, no, uh, uh, not, not about your, your impression, but what I think is, as a business person or owner, I think it's better for you to notify the customers. You should give the customers a module. This is how I operate. For example, you make it clear to your customers that, oh, I operate Monday to Friday, from this time to this time. If you use WeChat, like, let the customer know up front. Because some customers, like Dr. Chris, Chris Mala said, some customers will send you a message and they want to instant reply. They don't think that, ah, I, I wasn't born to stay on WeChat or WhatsApp. You know, they should. So I think based on Amazon's model and Amazon's uh, and iPhone model, it lets you know, listen, okay, we don't pick call to Amazon sellers, we don't pick calls, we send us email. So I think that that I think that model is kind of cool by the, the business owner to let the customers know how they operate. If you operate on WeChat, make it clear to them. If you don't operate on WeChat, make it clear to them. So that's my own input. Yeah. And this is Amelia. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if you can't so, say Yeah. So, hey guys, I'm leaving. Okay. Sorry, sorry. So okay. thank you so much for having me. Thank you. I have to thank go you. now because I'm still at the office. So I have to rush home. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for and everything. For consolation, I do have a uh, what's it called? I I I do have a policy. They all know that I don't. I work Monday to um, Friday. to Friday, yeah. but still, I every day I announce this. Like I give them my policy and everything, but still, some of them will still text me on Sundays, text me on Saturdays, and still tell me they want to order something, and I have to and I have to send that same day. So <laughs> they always believe customers are right. The only thing Wait. I do is just to ignore sometimes, though. Wait All a right. minute. Wait, did Mapule ask a question, please? Okay, sorry. Um, I just want to advise uh, Dr. Christie. Um, just an advice um, okay. about, because um, I know uh, your customers, some of them are from South Africa. Am I mm -hmm. right? So I just want to advise you um, on that because, you know, South Africans, we are we are very um challenging people okay and um it's very difficult for people to understand us okay so one thing i can say is the first thing is that when a south african likes someone or likes something like a product or something they will definitely support but sometimes it doesn't mean that they like you as a person they like your service or whatsoever products that you are uh, selling to them and then sometimes it doesn't necessarily mean that they do like you as a person um, so okay. that's one thing about them if they like your products they will support you but it doesn't mean that they will probably like you as a person no they'll just um, buy what they want to buy and if it benefits them or maybe they like how the products tricks them they will buy from you and then secondly 
uh, South African girls mostly, they like to be in groups. So they, um, they like to gossip a lot. They like to talk. So once you say something to one person, that person will go around and say to other people. So I think just try to be careful with them because um, most, most South African girls, excluding myself, I'm South African, but I don't... Yeah. I'm not like that. I'm not like okay. that, you know. Okay. So some, <laughs> some <laughs> South African, most South African women, they okay. are always part of a group and they always like to gossip about others. So you just need to be careful, um, more especially when you're dealing with such customers, because most of the time they do. Actually, Dr. Christie, a friend of mine, she was in China. She introduced me to your um to your products. And um, she was like, oh, this product is so good. You should try it. Wow. And I was so happy. I was like, okay, I'm going to try it. And mm -hmm. Dr. Christie, after using the product, she was not satisfied with the product. Mm -hmm. And then she told me that I shouldn't use your product and that, mm -hmm. um, you know, your business is, is, going, is not going to go well and stuff like that. And at that time, I think it was the time when your business was, um, you were having some challenges. And she said that to me. And it was so mean. What she said to me was very mean. But because I'm not that type of a person um, who listens to such things. Not so just are, you. That same person you're talking about spoke to a lot of people, a lot of my customers. Same one person. Not one. One person is doing that thing. That same person you're referring to. She spoke to all the South Africans that are my clients. And every one of them came back to tell me this. Do you know that that same person, I'm going to say this openly to everybody, okay? So this is what happened, Mrs. Emilia. Someone came to me and uh, she bought some products and then she claimed that the product um, was no good. Burns was no good. Skin. She bought an egg soap that she said the egg soap burns her, her skin, her neck or her face. I don't know which area. Mm. And before God and man, I have sold 1,000 pieces of that egg soap with no complaint from anybody. You understand? Mm. So when yeah. she said that, I was confused. Like, how can they just innocent egg soap, for God's sake, burn your skin? This is a soap. This is a, a transparent soap. A, any transparent soap is always mild. And before mm. God, uh, to God be the glory, I didn't produce this. This is produced by my company, a Chinese company. So they always, always, always work with the uh, regulation. So they will never put something that's gonna burn anybody. This is what I said to her. And I told her, I said, over 500 people have purchased this soap with no complaint. So how did you use this soap that it got you burned? This girl yeah. was so aggressive. She started insulting me. She went to social media. She went to call a group of friends. They attacked me on social media. Um, some people, they were just insulting me everywhere. And they went, she and a group of friends, they went around telling each of their friends not to ever, or anybody they know that was buying my product, they went to tell them to stop buying my product. But because our God is a faithful God, these same people, <laughs> All the people she went to, she was actually, God turned it around to be an advertisement. Instead of tarnishing my brand, she actually went around advertising free adverts for me because at that period, I was getting more sales instead of people running away. People are actually coming to buy. I was having more sales at that period. And everybody keeps coming to tell me, this person is saying this, this person is saying this. Now to blow up everybody's mind, that same girl, that same exact person contacted me. We spoke after that, like I had to, when it was too much, I had to contact. No, I didn't even contact. I sent someone to her. And then yeah. she, she came to contact me directly and said she's sorry. She went too far, blah, blah. So we, we finished on that. Do you believe that the last sales that we had, this same person came to purchase same products she claimed burnt her skin? <laughs> this is just so, i'm saying this now because i want everyone to understand this, this I, I hope everybody here is religious but that's how god does enemy i like to comment on it claim, burnt your skin and the thing is that i actually did not know that that was the person until i was like ah, this name looks familiar who is this person 
Then I went, I screw up and I see the channel like, oh my God, this girl, why are you buying the same product that you went to, to the old China to tell them that it's burnt you? Why are you buying the same product again? If it's actually burnt your skin, why are you buying the same product? Wow. Again. Wow. Thank yeah. you, Mapo, for sharing that. But Dr. Yeah. Yeah, I, is, has to go run because uh, she has a weekend too to herself. But uh, Constellation, what, yeah, I would did like you to... want to attack? Did you want? Did you want no, to no, attack her before she left? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Like what I have to say is, uh, like I'm, I'm just, I'm just interested in the part of someone who said God has vindicated, right? So according to, according to data analysis, I mean, you, you, YouTube data analysis, for every audience you have. For every customer you have, there will always be two to four percent who is going to discredit you. So if Chris Myler say somebody did something about her stuff, it's yeah. natural. It's only natural. Because if you have 500 customers, two to four percent must discredit you. So this is a so this is a fact that has been established already on YouTube analysis. Okay. Yeah, okay. so, so that's it. So I, I think she should, Chris Mala should probably expect more 2%. <laughs> more 2 to 4% yeah. at every level, discrediting okay. a brand or a product. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I, show, uh, I, I get offended yeah. sometimes when people say something like, okay, remember that video constellation, yeah, but, the one? Yeah. The one that video that i cried in yeah sure 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 yeah there was a lot lots and lots of mean things said about me on that video <laughs> yeah of course it's, it's not it's, it's normal <laughs> I, I i read the it's comment normal. i was like wow it's normal the, the first thing the first thing i wanted to defend myself i i typed a def yes. I typed a, a long paragraph re de trying to defend myself and for some reason yeah. It did not post. It got deleted. I, I pushed the wrong button, and I was like, "Oh, maybe, maybe God didn't want me to put that." <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it depends, Amelia, because you know most of most of the organization these days. I mean, our recent days. I mean, most of the successful or, or aspirant to be successful organization, they rely on data now. So. I think it's totally natural. When you have 100 customers, you're going to get 2% who's going to discredit you, or 4%, 2 to 4%. Mm -hmm. When I mean discredit, they may make video about you, trying to say it's just natural. That's just their behavior. Mm -hmm. they, they will always be those 2%, 2 to 4% at every stage, at every stage. Yeah. So, yeah, and I think this is a very vital for those who study MBA. I think it's taught in their course as well too, on how customers behave. Mm -hmm. Customer, yeah. customer relation, yeah. Customer relationship, yeah. So to, mm -hmm. Like go to YouTube now, for example, and type, or go to, sorry, go to Amazon and type Google and type false, maybe false cheetah, Amazon cheetah. You know, you see the two, two to four percent, they've, they've written blog about Amazon how Amazon cheats them, how Amazon did this to them, and other stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But in fact, most of them are false. But this is just who they are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so well, I, think it's, I think it's human nature or something like that. It sure is. Amelia, I have a yeah. suggestion as well. Okay. An advice actually for okay. you. Okay. Okay. Hey. Okay, Amelia, okay. Um, uh, earlier on, you mentioned about your colleague um, who's from the, I believe, from the UK. Yeah. And that maybe you might have misunderstood them or something like that. Um, so myself, I work with um, my colleagues, some are from the United States and the UK. And mm -hmm. what I have discovered is that, you know, uh, the americans and british there is that kind of clash naturally so because um you um okay i mean united i mean people from the united states have so many different opinions um and a way of life that's very different from 
how people from the UK um, are accustomed to. So I think that is the one of the reasons why most of the time um, people from the United States and the UK, they don't gel well together. So, so who think- wins? So who wins the popularity award? <laughs> I have to go with the UK. I definitely oh, no to- way. <laughs> no way, Jose. <laughs> I am so sorry. Um, the United <laughs> States. Because yeah. just as Eric mentioned earlier on that, um, you know, they are kind of like reserved in a way and it kind of, when they speak, they speak polite, but sometimes they actually don't mean what they say the way that you think, you know, there's a lot that gets lost in whatever they say. So it's yeah. kind of like seen as being polite, whereas with the United States, you know, um, people are very bold. I would actually compare people from the United States with Nigerians because there's a little bit of like aggression and being bold, but it's misunderstood, you know? So uh, yeah, I would categorize the United States people that grew up in the US or um, I, you know, citizens from the United States like with Nigerians because they have the same kind of uh, mannerism, characteristics, that sort of thing. Um, and then this is this is what I've just observed uh, per my observation. This is what I've found. Well, we think we win the awards, okay. and we we think we are also the number one power in the world. <laughs> this is the reason. This is the reason why there is conflict. <laughs> <laughs> and we think that our weapons are stronger than any country and we can prove it in the war in Ukraine. So there. Now, which country are you talking about, please? Uh, United States. <laughs> well, uh, 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 well, Emilia, if you yeah. if I'm right, United States is not a country. Okay, it's fine. A, it's a United it's a state yeah, it, of it, country. It, it's, it's an accumulation United. of people. It's yeah, an accumulation yeah. of people. Okay. Yeah, because right now, Ghanaians are going back to Ghana. I mean, American Ghanaians. So very soon, there will be a deployment of the people in the U.S. going go back to going back to their to their roots. Yeah. Anyhow, it's fine. But I just know America is not a country. It's just it's just accumulation of different people coming together and have a strong workforce. Yeah. Okay. You yeah. got you got a point. And so yeah. so 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 I I I take it that Canada does not belong to the UK. Well, I don't care for those things, Amelia. Well, oh. <laughs> their territory. Well, you're the one who brought up United <laughs> States. Yeah. If well, you want to go that to... route. By yeah, the I'm way, my to... I'm just playing with you, okay, my I'm trying to attack you, small, from that air. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, 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 I get you very well, but this is, I'm also talking based off of my experience, you know, because, oh, okay. so, from South Africa, we were, our okay. education system, we were taught the, you know, that our accent is more like the UK, not, um, okay. United States. So um, okay. we, we get along with people from the UK very well. But then when we have to, um, you know, have relations with uh, Americans, there's just a certain attitude sometimes that just, you know, is quite yeah. tricky. It's quite tricky. Quite tricky. But, yeah. 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 Like, like what, what kind of tricky? <laughs> okay. I think generally, this is why okay. I, I said earlier on that South Africans, we believe in Ubuntu. Like, when you approach me, approach okay. me first as a human being. Don't approach so me human because being. I'm black, I, because I'm a I, woman, okay. I'm a man. Okay. Approach me as just being a human being. So I feel like sometimes okay. uh, Americans, they are not in, 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 like, maybe in touch with that because we are very cultural as well, but in a different way. So we even express it in the manner of approach. When we approach people, we want to hear what you have to say. And sometimes, to be honest, uh, Americans don't have, they don't have very good listening skills, I'm sorry to say. Okay, <laughs> and let, me, let, me, let me come into uh, that area. 
from, from a little experience. You know, the Ameri okay. You know, the Americans, the American people that this, this is just my view, okay? I don't know if it's right on papers, but what I think is right. The American people are having the character of the Indians. That means that, from my view, that means that the average American, he doesn't want to waste. Like, if you go to India, and I've been to India, and if you go to India, you will not, most people won't survive in India. Because an Indian man doesn't want to waste any time. So I think that the American guys, they don't want to waste time. Like, good morning, how, that, that, that time. I, I think they value their time. So, so foreigners, I feel they might, foreigners might feel like, oh, these guys are, you know, these guys are non Ubuntu's. Like they are not looking at me as a human being or whatever. So from my view, I just think that it's just about time. They don't want to waste time. Okay, this is it. This is it. Like this or like that. Choose one. So that's what I feel about the American people, and of course Indians. Okay, so uh, Emilia, so, so I lived. I, I, in, I don't know if that is clear. So I lived Sorry? in America for more than thirty years. Yeah. And I I, I would be the first one to tell you that. Okay. Over there, the, the majority of people are, excuse my language, selfish okay. as hell. They're selfish as hell. Okay. Ubuntu, that Ubuntu stuff belongs in the <laughs> toilet. That's I right. Am, <laughs> I am because of who you are. I am because yeah. of who you are. Who the hell are you? You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah so every man for themselves and Jesus for us all. That's the American way. By the that time, by that, that time a kid, when a kid, when a kid is fourteen years old, he's okay. thinking of himself. He's thinking about how he can get a job at McDonald's, and when he works at mm. McDonald's, only thinking about himself. Mm. And when he turns eighteen, mother and father are looking at him. Uh, what are you still doing here? Aren't you eighteen? Get out. Mm. But they don't chase it like that. But most of them go to college, you know, to a boarding school or whatever. But um, those that cannot afford to, they end up on the street with bad friends. It's bad because, friends. oh, you are 18. You have the freedom to do whatever. With that, with that freedom comes a lot of selfishness. Well, the world is crazy. It's crazy, yeah. actually. Well, I, I think, Emilia, everywhere, just every, every country or community just have the rules that we should just abide to the rules, right? Like, just, just like you, you mean mentioned. Cultural, you mean cultural rule. Wherever the case may be, yeah. Because like, like what you said now, yeah, it's, it's right from your view there. And of course, South African also have their own their own rules, like what she said now, like, I think it was Rose or so, someone said something, you know, in South Africa that the girls, uh, like, they, like they, they, they gossip, right? Like, that's how it, that, 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 <laughs> it was my pule. Uh -huh, sure. Pule. That, pule. That's how they, they, that, that, that's how they do. So I think it's just about the rules. Like, for example, as well, too, in Nigeria, uh, there are some people, there are some kind of, uh, there are some tribe in Nigeria, which I won't call the name. They also gossip. Like when you tell one person something, that is you've told the whole community. <laughs> you've told the whole community. And that's who they are. You know, that's just who they are. So <laughs> I think we just know the rules. Hey, you know what? You know what? I used to think that blacks, we gossip a lot. <laughs> Oh my God! The white people they gossip yeah. worse. They, uh, when yeah. they when they gossip, they just smile at your face. You'll never even know they're doing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think it's the rules. I think, have their own I, I think I think the gossip is a human thing. <laughs> yes. Would you know? Would you know? Last year, the head of my school, um, yeah. was not getting was, did not get his contract renewed. All yeah. those white people gossip with each other. He was the last one to find out he lost his job. Everybody will <laughs> come to you. I, and get this. I'm the only black teacher in the school. So people will come to me. Did you know he's not coming back? But keep it a secret. 
So everybody yeah, I knew said, it. Keep, everybody yeah. said keep it a secret. The poor guy, the day he found out, he said, many of you must already know. I think one of the teachers went and told him anyway. One of the teachers yeah. went and told him. <laughs> yeah. Everybody I think just the rules of life, Amina, right? Yeah. Everybody gossips. <laughs> just the rules. Uh, well, guys, <laughs> it's been nice. Let me get ready for church tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow. Thanks for everything. Thank you, Mapole. Man, thanks for uh, at least. I, I, even if I forgot everything today, I just know that South African girls they gossip. So I, I was very careful in this era. Uh, <laughs> are you telling? Th- look, thanks Ms. for this information. Miss Nancy, Nancy will tell you. Miss Nancy will tell you that Nigeria girls gossip no. more. No, thanks for this. No, th- this information, uh, I think it's, it's one of the most key information I took. You, I know our brothers, they love our girls. That's the yeah. reason we want to know. So be careful out there. I'll be very careful. I, I, I actually wrote it down. What you said, I, I wrote it down. So I don't I don't forget, even if I forget some papers. So, so when Bye-bye. I tell one South African girl something, it means the whole girl has heard it, right? That's if it. she has a lot of friends, please make sure okay. you know. If she has girls, a lot oh, of friends, right. please be careful. Okay. Including you, right? Because you're also South African, so we should be careful in general. <laughs> no, I'm not <laughs> like them. I'm not like of course. them. I'm, of course, you I'm are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay, man. Okay, bye. Emilia. Yeah, bye bye. Emilia, thank you. Bye bye.